morning everyone and how are you doing? I am so excited about this video today. It's literally 20 years in the making because the whole point of this video today is to celebrate 20 years of Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings very much changed my life in a way. It taught me about this fantasy world that I just, oh, I love fantasy. I love to be transported. It was the film that really pushed for me to want to be a costumer. It was the film that told me I wanted to be an elf and um, do archery. <laughs> so it's very full circle because I'm an archer and I do archery all the time. And I am a costumer. But this is the costume I've been wanting to make for donkey's years. Today I will be making Arwen's blue dress which is from Return of the King. So Arwen's costumes in the third Lord of the Rings film are so iconic. There is something so beautiful about it. Like her coronation gown that green, it's so beautiful. And what's ironic, every time I close my eyes to talk about how amazing this is, I get a ring in my eyes because I've got a ring light on. So it's all very, you know, full cycle, isn't it? The reason I chose to make the blue dress instead of the green one or the black and red one, I just thought, oh, it's so beautiful. I think that one stands out to me the most. And also, if I did the green dress, I feel like it'd be too much pressure because I know they spent weeks dying for the perfect green and I'm just not a very talented dyer so it would be too much pressure to get it wrong and also I would have to make the headpiece because it's stunning and the red one, you know, it's, it's lovely actually it's gorgeous, all of it's gorgeous The costumes are designed by Nyla Dixon and Richard Taylor They've created something amazing in every single movie and every single world because they have to create so many different races and characters and genres. You've got the hobbits, you've got elves, you've got woodland elves, you've got river elves, you've got Gondor, you've got Rohan, you've got orcs, you've got Urukai. It's just amazing. What I would do to be able to walk through the storage for those films, oh, wow, it would be mind-blowing. And a film that also got me really inspired to become a costumer was ever after and when I got to stand next to that costume I cried and I took selfies and then my hard drive dropped and I lost all the selfies <sighs> so next time I am going to take multiple cameras if I ever get to see those costumes now what I love about the elves that they've created they're really meant to be free-flowing and very organic because they're kind of like leaves dropping down no, going in the wind. When you see the elves, they just glide, don't they? They don't walk, they glide, because they're so elegant and soft. Like, I remember there's a scene with um, Legolas walking through the snow, and he's walking above the snow, and everyone else is in the snow because he's so lightweight. So uh, tell me a person that hasn't tried to be an elf in woodlands and walk very light-footed through the forest. I do it all the time. So there's something about this costume in particular. The colour. It is such a stunning blue grey shade and the way it drapes and honestly the sleeves and the neckline oh, it is such a powerful elegant costume and I just had to create it just had to and also I knew that it was going to be a challenge to find the velvet I'm really happy to go to this design because when I was 17 a million years ago I actually created something very similar because when you do your final year of school in Australia, you can do a design technology. And for that, I decided to do costume design because I'd written a script. I did the production design in visual arts and I painted posters and things like that. And then for d and I made two costumes. Now, one of the patterns, it was inspired by Lord of the Rings. So of course I still have it. It's practically vintage, but it was really amazing to come back to this costume and have more of awareness of how I wanted to do it because like when I originally did it I did it with you know satins because I just you know I didn't understand rich fabrics that I could get and especially living in the UK I'm able to get more of a rich variety so this velvet what a hunt that was but I found it in South Hall oh, it's so beautiful and I know the sleeves are also kind of more of like a chiffon crushed beautiful flowing fabric but I felt like using velvet as well 
would be a nice full sim look for me. So to find this silver and this blue velvet, oh. And one of my other favorite things to do is just to scroll through eBay, looking at beautiful Indian trimmings. I have found some beautiful ones that would be perfect version of what we wanted to do. Now that I had my fabrics, I went to work to pattern cut. Now, I forgot how much I hate working in velvet and you know, totes to all the costumers that do do it. It's just never quite easy. Now the first thing I had to do was find out which way the direction of the velvet went because you want to go down with it. I think it looks nicer if the piles of the velvet go down. And then once I'd done that, I tried laying out the fabric. Try being the operative word. <laughs> I um, found it very hard just to fold it together. You kind of had to pick it up from the top and then shake it a little bit to get it to drape better so it'd sit flush and I wouldn't have to worry about cutting it inappropriately or having extra fabric or rolls and things like that. So that took me a while and I did lose my mind. So with this pattern piece, it does come in four different pieces. You had the front, you had the front side, the back side and the back. Now because in the costume for the, from the film, there is no panels in the front. Realistically, there's only two panels, which is the side and the back. I decided for the front to have no seams. So I connected these two patterns together to try and create a similar sort of style. And I also decided to make it extra with the seam allowance because when I made this originally, I was what, 17, now I'm 32. So my body shape's changed a little bit. So we needed to give it a little bit of extra give. And that's okay because if it was too big, one, we wanted it to be a bit big because it's meant to drape, isn't it? And be very free flowing. And also, it's easy enough to take these things in, isn't it? So I cut that pattern, and then for the back piece, I wasn't really happy with how it's sitting, because what I really, really wanted to make sure is I got so much fabric into this costume. So doing the two patterns together really wasn't the best way for it, so I decided to do it in like the two pieces like I originally had done. That way I was able to accentuate the train, which is what I really, really, really wanted to do. Now, the thing I noticed about this design, it's technically two dresses. You've got the top dress, which is kind of like a slip to go over it all. And then you have the main dress, which is the sleeves and the main bodice of it. So because, you know, velvet's kind of expensive, I tried to be a bit more eco with my savings. So I got some general velvet that I could use that was a bit more heavyweight so that could be the main basis of the skirt because really you could done a cotton you could do something like that but I wanted it to feel like it was the same weight all together and you weren't misaligned with how it was meant to drape and flow in nature so realistically the main dress underneath we had the crushed velvet and then we had a little bit of silver left over from the sleeves so I made a very generous hem underneath so if you saw a little pop of color if you were walking with your dress up you saw the silver underneath so you could get an illusion that it was an ombre underneath and then with the bodice i used the blue fabric on top and i cut it to about underneath the ribs now with the sleeves i was really excited about the sleeves i ended up cutting four pieces so it would be the velvet on top and on the inside but i also made it bigger than necessary because their sleeves are just ginormous and that's what really really wanted to do isn't it when it came to those sleeves i was very aware because the silver fabric was so heavy we needed to create something that was strong so i used some denim as the main sleeve to be attached to the body and then the little cup sleeve could just sit over the top of it and it's kind of just showing this layers and layers and layers and layers underneath it because if i had done the silver sleeve attached to the little top sleeve, it would have just draped. It would have hung down so low and it would have stretched the fabric and destroyed the fabric and it wouldn't have looked quite right, which is what we didn't want to do. Now, let's get to making the dress. It's a really, really simple make, which is beautiful of it because realistically, this is a medieval pattern, isn't it? That's where it's coming from. So they wouldn't have had the skills. Well, they had the skills, but you know, 
it just wouldn't have had so many seams. So it was really easy to stitch the front and the two, the side and the back together. And then we had to do this twice, of course, but this underneath one was a bit more difficult because then you had to attach the hem to it on top of the fabric and then you had to attach the bodice to it and then make sure it fits all really nicely. Now, once I'd done the main dresses, I decided to add some interfacing to the collar because I didn't want, when I'd sewn the ribbon on, the fabric to bend and sway and be really not quite right. We want it to sit flush, we want it to sit strong. When the whole idea is to make everything very strong up here so it can drape down there. So I interface that and then I put a little collar lining to it. So once I had stitched down the facing and the facing to the collar, I decided to flip it over and do a top stitch. I'm quite partial to a top stitch because I really, I like the look of it, but I also want it to be firm and strong. And then when we stitch the ribbon on top of it, we've got somewhere to have traction. And then you just turn over the fabric on the inside and you can machine stitch it now. Measure the ribbon that you're gonna use so you know that you can have it just on the edge of it or just underneath it because you don't really want to see the stitch line underneath it do you you want it so the ribbon will be hiding it so make sure you do it on the two dresses okay because you've got two lots of trimming to do now what we have to make sure we do is that we do the underneath dress first at all times so I set to work in sewing down all the beautiful trimming that we had now because of the nature of the trimming it's not a flexible ribbon, we knew that. I'm okay with the fact that it was pleated because it was so beautiful. So to get the pleats, I just pulled some of the little gemstones off so we could pleat it a bit more. And then I stitched it all down, quite simple. Now because of these little pleats, I had bought some extra trim. And I also love a little bit of trim. It's like a little bit of a scallop edging coming out of it, isn't it? So I stitch on some little scallop silver trimming to go over it and that takes away from all the pleats and you're not really looking straight there. Now after that, I decided to put the top dress over the mannequin. I was happy with how the main dress looked like. So we have to put the top dress over to make sure we're happy with how everything's going to sit. Because we want to show off both pieces of the trimming, don't we? We don't want to hide it because I had, as you saw, I cut it as it was meant to be. So, so with the top dress, once I was happy with it, I trimmed it all down to where I wanted it and then I went ahead again and I did the ironing on interfacing and then I did the little facing on the collar and this time I had to make the stitching shorter because we were gonna have a different sort of trimming on now. Now this trimming, it has to be hand sewn. It can't be machine sewn. And you know what, if you put on a great movie, maybe Lord of the Rings, it's not that hard to do a bit of hand stitching. I cannot describe when I put this on the mannequin how excited I was to see it all coming together. To just, you know, you have to, you put on the mannequin and you just step back and go, did I just do that? That's beautiful. Oh, wow. Like, I, I cannot describe how much I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, the next thing we had to sell on was the sleeves. Now, I found this lace in Shepherd's Bush Markets and I'm really, really happy with it because it's not exactly the lace that it was in the film, but what I love about it, it looks like mountains and because technically she's a river mountain elf because she lives in Rivendale, they're more mountainous, so I wanted to represent her mountains in there. You know, just trying to be like that person. And it's the perfect colour, it looked really good with the blue, it was perfect. So with the fabric I had already cut up for the pattern, I just laid over this lace, laid over this lace, whew, don't get that often do you? So I laid over the lace and then I just did some tack stitching down to it so it wouldn't move when we sewed all together. You just sew the sleeve together. Now we're going to pause that little project for a second and move on to the big sleeves. Now with the big sleeves, I sewed the hem together. And then once I'd done that, I turned it up 
and I didn't do a top stitch on it because I wanted it to be more rivery and flowy that way. And then you attach the side seams together, stitch it together, and then you bag it all out. Now, once that's all been done, you want to attach it to the denim sleeve, which you had followed the steps for because, you know. So I cut that sleeve, the denim sleeve, a little bit shorter than it needed to be because I didn't want to see it when it, we put over the other sleeve. So then I stitched down the silver sleeve to the denim sleeve and it felt really strong. I was really happy with it. Now that I was happy with it, I put over the lace sleeve and I kind of played with the length of the sleeve that we wanted to have. We don't want to have it too long, we don't have it too short. So it's really just getting a feel of how you want it to sit. So once I was happy with the desired look, I took the sleeve off, I went ahead and, did, and put some more of that big, bold silver trimming that we used on the main dress. It was starting to look so, so stunning. Oh. Now, once I'd done that, I attached the two sleeves together and we were able to put them into the costume. So, as I said, it's a pretty easy dress. So the rest now was to hem it. I gave the top dress a small hem because I still wanted to get all that fabric going. But with the dress underneath, I gave it a bit more of a hem because, you know, you don't really want to have a little peek of the silver underneath, but in case you do, you have the silver to cover it for it. Right. So, that all being said, it's a really easy dress, which I'm just still shocked going through it with you and like, okay, that's done. Right. What next? Well, I'll tell you what's next. Let's travel to Waverley Abbey and do a spectacular montage of this dress in this beautiful location. And just before we go there, who needs an SFX team? The mists that are rolling off the hills are coming down just when we wanted it.
enjoyed that vlog. I was so excited to make this. I was so happy to film this. So many of my friends I've shown sneak peeks to. They're so in awe of this dress. It's so, so cool. Like, Lord of the Rings is one of the greatest films in the world. The fact that we got to go back into Middle Earth and have The Hobbit and then get three films of it. And now we're getting a TV series of it. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe because it really does help my channel. And let me know if you like these sort of things. If you want me to like recreate costumes from films, do you want me to do an analysis of my favorite film costumes? Because I'm going to say only positive things about those things because oh, some of the costumes in the olden days of the noughties, it was freaking groundbreaking. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So on that note, I will see you later and I really, really hope you enjoyed this beautiful homage to Lord of the Rings because it's by far one of the greatest books in the whole wide world and film franchise. And honestly, who doesn't want to be an elf? <laughs>